This week on Quadriga, Egyptian winter, Morsi under pressure. More than 50 people have died in clashes across Egypt in the past week. The chief cause of the unrest, frustration that the new leadership has failed to improve the lives of ordinary Egyptians. President Morsi faces growing criticism. The head of the armed forces has warned that the Egyptian state could collapse and the opposition wants a new government and changes to the constitution. On Wednesday, Morsi visited Berlin in an effort to obtain financial backing and to convince Europe of his democratic credentials. Chancellor Angela Merkel urged him to open a dialogue with all political forces. But with Egypt's economy on its knees, it may take more than that to stabilise the country. Your host this week, Ali Aslan. Hello and welcome to Quadriga. Despite the turmoil back home in Egypt, President Morsi took time out to come to Germany, to visit Germany here in Berlin and to ask Chancellor Merkel for financial and political support. Yet he had to cut his visit short and head back home because he's becoming increasingly under pressure where the turmoil is continuing in Egypt. So the question is, what is going to happen in Egypt and how much longer can Morsi stay in power? That's what we're going to talk about with my three experts and they are welcome to Said Samir who is a Berlin-based journalist from Egypt who's published numerous articles in both English and Arabic publications. Thomas Hasel is a German broadcast journalist who's, speciali who's specializing on the Middle East and North Africa in particular. And Hoda Salah is an Egyptian-German political scientist. Welcome to you all. Said Samir, Egypt once again, one is inclined to say, whenever one gets the feeling things are under control, Egypt once again is back in the headlines. Everybody is looking towards Tahrir Square once again. Explain to us why, why these new protests? Actually, uh, the main cause for this protest is that uh, many uh, people in Egypt are not happy with the policies of Morsi. Uh, he has spread so many promises, I mean, during his election campaign and even afterwards. And he doesn't really keep uh, much of his promises. And there is a huge disappointment, not only in the opposition part, but even some of the uh, supporters of Muslim Brothers started to lose hope. Uh, recently, many of his uh, direct consultants, I mean, uh, uh, sex consultants, resigned from the surface. And they declared afterwards they are not sure if the decisions are made in the presidential palace. Thomas Hazel, in Egypt just recently marked the second anniversary of the revolution that toppled Mubarak and brought, supposedly brought a new age and of, of, the, of, the, of democratic culture to, to Egypt. So many people are convinced that Morsi betrayed the revolution. Would you go as far as to say that? He's the one who betrayed the revolution? No, I, I think it would go a bit too far to say he betrayed the revolution because it's, um, it's, a, very, it's a very difficult situation he's in. He's the first um, more or less freely elected president in Egypt, which is quite important. But um, he has to reform so many things. He has to change a whole um, structure of a country politically, um, economically, etc., etc. And I think um, he has a lot of opponents who don't want these big changes, people um, who profited a lot um, from the past eras uh, under Mubarak. And so I think he has to deal with these people. Uh, and then, on the other hand, he has a problem which is um, difficult to, uh, to deal with maybe as well. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood, which is his main, uh, the main group behind him, um, has no real experience in, in a democratic culture. So I have the feeling, and, and everything I'm reading about uh, shows me signs in this way, that they um, want to stick to power. They fear uh, of losing this power again because they have this long experience um, of being oppressed by the state uh, security apparatuses. 
and they don't trust anyone. And so it's very hard for them apparently to, to reach out to the opposition, which they really should do. And on the, the third point is there's an opposition which is there, uh, but which um, is not really wise, in my opinion, until now, to reach out as well to the Muslim Brotherhood and to the president and to say we have to sit around a table and we have to find an agreement to uh, bring a better future to Egypt. And we will certainly talk more about the opposition that is forming in Egypt. Hoda Saleh, when you look at Morsi and, and the actions that he uh, took impl implemented ever since he came into power, what, what would you say? Is he gi given a, f a fair rap by the international community or? I think, um, like what Thomas said, he has a lot of challenges in Egypt. The army, the army is very strong too. Okay, he guarantees <laughs> the rights of the army in the constitution, and they have this uh, very deeply police state and uh, the corruption in Egypt. Uh, and he has, I think, a very strong uh, opposition and very strong um, street. Do you know, I think what happened now in Egypt, it's remind me a little bit as the last days from Mubarak. I hope that Morsi doesn't have his last days in Egypt, but, uh, but you know, I think people go now, uh, or go now on the street not because they are, um, uh, they, they, they see that he betrayed the revolution, but I think a lot of people too, they feel, uh, they feel a, a lack of respect. Do you remember? By whom? By, by, by Morsi. By Morsi himself. By Morsi and the Muslim brothers. Do you remember as the, uh, in the last days of Mubarak, it was the same situation. We had the election, and it was a big corruption in the election, and he said 90, 90% of Egyptians uh, are for me. And then you have very quiet, you had very quiet street, and after two weeks, it was explosion. And the same happened now, after the, um, this uh, constitution, um, what is this, Abstimmung? Um, the referendum. Referendum. You had before it a lot of um, demonstration, and then you have a little very uh, quiet time, and now you have the explosion. And I think Egyptian, or uh, the goals of this revolution was dignity and the respect of uh, human dignity. And, uh, and they feel uh, there is, they can't reach these small things, what they think that's a first step to have the economic and the social justice. Would you agree, Said Samir, there's no respect? I do agree, and I have some personal uh, experience with this and with some friends of mine who are politicians or journalists, and they all complain that uh, members of the Muslim Brothers uh, treat them with a lot of arrogance. And uh, I think uh, what I'd like also to comment on what he said, that Morsi is the first free elected uh, president in Egypt. I, ha I had to disagree because Mubarak claimed the same thing. If you believe elections in Egypt is very transparent and fair, I think uh, one has to look deeper. And Muslim brothers have been practicing this game of elections for so many years. They mastered it with Mubarak regime. And uh, if someone tells you there are so many, maybe hundreds of uh, documented, uh, uh, rigged uh, cases in, uh, during the referendum, uh, during the presidential elections, it is not uh, far from reality. So, I, but you would not deny that he won the election. Of course, he won the election, and but and I, that he has substantial support. He has, the of course, but it is not with the uh, percentage that they claim to have. As she was saying, now Muslim, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and Morsi himself are now claiming to be supported by the vast majority of Egyptians, which is a lie. And uh, uh, this exact uh, uh, thing has happened with Mubarak uh, at this last time. And I think uh, Muslim brothers, to be able to control the situation now, they have to be much more realistic and face the reality. Morsi was elected w by 51%. Uh, and many of those who voted for him, they voted for him only because they hated that someone from the old regime will come to power after a revolution. It would be an international joke. And that's why the real uh, quota of Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt 
is much less than 50 percent. And Thomas Hazel, the arrogance on the part of the Muslim <coughs> Brotherhood that both Huda Salah and Said Samir have been talking about might be an opening, might be a chance for the army. No? Look at what General Abdul Fattah al Sisi said. He just warned that the political crisis could threaten the future of Egypt. Is this a comeback for the Egyptian army? Well, I, I hope not. Um, and I'm not so sure that they really want to have a real comeback on the political uh, scene. They, they are quite happy to be in the background and to keep their privileges and their power uh, in this background. But um, it's somewhat of a veiled threat, no? Uh, this new announcement. Yeah, but it, it, maybe it's a pressure tool. Maybe it's a sign um, we would prefer another candidate, uh, somebody who's easier to handle, maybe. But I, I'm not so sure that this is really the case. I, I'm not so sure that Mursi is really difficult to handle for the army. Uh, they must have been some kind of agreement between some parts, substantial parts of the of the heads of the army and and the Muslim Brotherhood in Mursi. Um, otherwise, uh, in the last month, certain decisions couldn't have happened li like they were. Um, so. I guess it's more uh, some kind of sign. Um, we, we watch you. Uh, you're not free in your decisions. Uh, and, and, and I think this is the big problem, and this is the case. Morris is not uh, as free as an elected president should be. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that's very important to come back to, um, to what you were saying, I think um, Morsi did this big mistake, um, and those who are advising him, um, not to reach out to broader groups of um, the opposition or of the society. This is what, what everyone can see. The Muslim Brotherhood and, and Mursi, they sometimes behave like um, a beleaguered group uh, fearing everyone, seeing opponents everyone. Every demonstration is somehow led by the dark forces of the old Mubarak era. That's not a democratic way to deal with these things. And I think it would be very, very important for the Muslim Brotherhood and, uh, and, the, uh, and Mursi and the opposition as well, not to see foes everywhere, not to, to um, say uh, Islamists are the evil or um, secularists are the evil. They have some common ground. All those who want to change uh, Egypt for a good and democratize Egypt and, and uh, reform the economy and, and uh, bring some kind of social equality, they have to sit together and uh, forget about these, um, let's say, a bit ideolo ideological issues. And I think this is the only way to go. Otherwise these forces that really don't want any change in the system, they will prevail. But Asala, you seem to agree with Thomas Azo. Uh, that's the same message what uh, I tried yesterday to say to Morsi. I was invited, I was from the 100 per, um, persons who were invited in the embassy, and you can imagine it was maybe 70% or 80% Muslim brothers, and you feel that too, they feel very strong. And I, yesterday I tried to, to say to him this message, I know he has a lot of challenges, and I know he has inside challenges and in the country, in the country with the army and the police, but in, inside the Muslim brothers. And uh, I try to say to him, Muslim brother now has a trend to more, uh, to more dictatorship. And the Muslim brother was, for a lot of us, a moderate uh, current. And we, we support him. And uh, we still support him. And I asked him yesterday, please try to, to free yourself from some, these very small Muslim brothers and be a president of all Egyptian with the different currents. And we will help you. And uh, I told him that a lot of us, really, a lot of us too from other, other currents, we, we uh, support him to, to win the election. And now we are afraid. Uh, because of this, a lot of pressure from the army. So and would you say Morsi is a hostage of the more radical fractions within the Muslim uh, Brotherhood? You have now a trend in the, in the Muslim Brotherhood. You have the most moderate people, they are now outside the Muslim Brothers. Before the revolution, they were united, like a lot of opposition in Egypt, because the enemy is very clear, is the old state. But now, uh, I, was, I was in Cairo now, you see on the street, in Madbouli, in, um, in publisher houses, you have more than 20 books from people. They were inside the Muslim brother and said, it's very conservative now for us. We would like to have our freedom. And yesterday, I tried to give him this message. Why you lose this moderate and liberal Islamist? And why you have now in the Muslim brother this small, very conservative and radical groups? And try to to free yourself, and we are beside you. But the people yesterday from the Muslim Brothers, they were so against uh, me. But I hope that uh, Morsi knows that um, we will not forgive to him if the army will come in the discussion now. So mm -hmm. President Morsi, if I understand it correctly, has to emancipate himself yes. from, 
fractions within his own party, Said Samir. Yes, I, I just want to comment on one thing she said about the number or the percentage of Muslim brothers inside the, this uh, meeting uh, at the embassy. It doesn't by any means represent Egyptians here in, uh, in <coughs> Berlin or in Germany, and they were chosen very selectively. And uh, I'll give you an example. I was invited uh, to this event uh, by uh, an organization here, and my invitation was questioned by the embassy, uh, rejecting that, how can a Muslim like me being introduced to the uh, meeting by a Christian organization? And I was shocked, but this gave us an indication, if here in Germany, this is how the embassy treat the, the situation, and they question my invitation, based on my religion, being a Muslim and introduced by a Christian, uh, uh, how, how about it is in, in Egypt? I believe uh, this uh, slogan or uh, this abuse of religion in Egypt by both uh, Muslim Brotherhood and Salafists, as they are the one who represent religion and any other opposition, they are against Islam, this abuse of religion is getting worse and worse during uh, the last seven months of more serious rule. Hoda Salah, jump in quickly. Yes, very, very important. Yesterday, for me too, it was an example of the, a little bit of the Egyptian society. I tell you something. Yesterday, uh, maybe were 20 people that you are Christian. And really, I was uh, uh, disappointed that the um, um, representative of the Evangelic and Copt uh, uh, Church were there. And you know what they said? President Morsi, we thank you very much that you are our president. And no critical words about what happened now in Egypt from conflicts in, in the religious conflicts. And um, yesterday I thought it's the same. Not Morsi have, uh, has to, to change his mind on thinking way, but Egyptian too. Christian and the representative of the Christian um, uh, church, they don't see themselves as uh, citizenship, equal citizen. But, uh, and uh, you know, yesterday I thought, okay, seven women were invited, like me, I am the court, uh, the court, uh, mm, and um, I, I, I hope that not um, more see that the opposition and the currents, the different governments in the Egyptian uh, uh, society change their mind and political attitude too. Well, clearly the problems within the Egyptian society are very complex, but there's one issue that is really absolute, absolutely fundamental for the future of Egypt, and that is the state of the economy. The state of the economy right now is in shambles. The Muslim Brotherhood have not been able to put it together. Let's have a quick look at what the future holds for Egypt on the economic scene. Egypt's tourism industry is one of the country's most important sources of income. Many hopes rest on foreign tourists continuing to come. But in Cairo and at many of the ancient sites, visitor numbers have collapsed by as much as 40% compared with before the revolution. A further problem is that the army retains control over large parts of the economy. Many Egyptians hoped in vain that the end of the Mubarak regime would change that and free up business. In addition, parts of the state bureaucracy worked slowly or not at all during the political changes of recent months. That made it difficult for businesses to obtain permits and rendered the economy even less competitive. Egypt has only limited ways to earn foreign cash, such as the Suez Canal. As long as there is political uncertainty, those earnings will continue to be threatened. Well, Thomas Adel, we, we just saw the economy in Egypt is clearly in decline. Tourists and foreign in investors have been staying away during this time of chaos. What needs to be done here? Well, um, the most important thing is some kind of uh, stability and um, to, to, to show signs um, that the economical um, era as well um, is somehow uh, reformed in a positive way. Um, before uh, under Mubarak there was some, uh, there was political stability, but still uh, the economy didn't uh, succeed in a way it could have done uh, with all the, uh, all the advantages Egypt has, and I think um, after some kind of new political stability uh, is reached, which has to come by 
more democratic means, of course not a uh, autocratic stability again, um, then all those blockades and, and, and uh, obstacles to a freer um, economy uh, have to be settled. So that means um, the, the bureaucracy, which is really a big hindrance um, to a development of smaller or, or medium uh, productive companies, has to be reformed. Um, it must be much easier to, to, um, to, fund, uh, uh, to fund little um, little companies, to create companies, to, to uh, expand their own cre creativity. There are so many young people with great ideas in Egypt, but they always find out when they want to uh, realize their, um, their ideas, and there's somebody blocking them. And this has to change. And youth unemployment in Egypt is particularly high, leading to a great deal of frustration. Said Samir, what would you say? I, I think I agree with him. Uh, the economic challenges uh, facing uh, President Morsi uh, is very hard. And even uh, his visit to Germany during this very hard uh, unrest in Egypt, uh, it's a sign that uh, he takes those challenges very seriously. And maybe he's even valuing them more than the political challenges. And uh, he was disappointed, of course. <laughs> he was thinking that he would be able to come to Germany and try to spread his promises as he spreads butter. And, but of course, the German uh, partner is uh, well uh, uh, advised about the situation in Egypt. And if he claims, uh, yesterday was during the press conference, that Egypt is on the right path to democracy, no one will believe him, looking what's happening in Egypt. If he claims that he is in favor of what is called in Egypt the civil state, meaning it's kind of military state on kind of theocracy, it is very known in Egypt that there are two main powers or two main uh, political groups. One that is supporting uh, the, the uh, civil state, or they are the liberals and seculars and so, and the ones who are the Islamists, which are more see part of it. So coming here to Germany and claiming that he is in favor of a non-religious state, while in Egypt his group is demonstrating with slogans to apply Sharia. So how can you justify this? So he was disappointed, it was clear, he was uh, here mainly to try to attract uh, financial aid from Germany and uh, to improve the very bad situation. And uh, I'm afraid uh, uh, if the economic situation in Egypt improved quickly, Muslim Brotherhood will lose any credibility because the vast majority of the supporters of Muslim Brotherhood are a segment of the society which are economically challenged, let's put it this way, the poors. The ones who believe in uh, their slogans are the ones who are mainly not highly educated. They are the poors. This is how what the elections showed. Mm. I'm sure uh, he is disagreeing with me because he likes, uh, or uh, what he presented is that the opposition against Morsi is mainly uh, uh, the ones who are against change. I disagree completely with him. The opposition against Morsi mainly are the ones who initiated the revolution. We can put three groups in Egypt, very definite groups. One are the ones who are pro-revolution, and the <coughs> other one are the old system and the Islamists. And those groups' dynamics are the ones who are uh, forming. Let's give, uh, let's give yeah. Thomas Hazel a chance to <laughs> okay. respond to yeah. make this uh, point clear. Um, of course, not everyone who's against Morsi is part of the old system. That would be... Uh, it's a majority. Awkward. What is the majority? No, 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 no. Um, a lot of people on the streets, young people who want a real change, they are against the old system of Mubarak. They went to the streets two years ago. They went to the streets again and again, uh, and they try to um, co uh, construct some kind of new system. And of course, there are people who profited under Mubarak in the administration, um, a lot of rich people as well. Yeah? Uh, the whole security apparatus wouldn't exist like it is there now if, uh, if it hadn't been funded in the way it was. The military has a very special role, which is not normal for a democratic country. Yeah? And all those people have to lose 
if there are a, a real reforms, state reforms, uh, democratic, democratic reforms, and this is the problem. Uh, how can you how can you build a bridge between those in the Islamist movement who want changes and those in the let's call it liberal or secular movement who also want changes uh, for a better? Because these are the two who have to win, and those who have to lose, they are deep in the state and they try to fight every change. This is the big problem, and you should not conf um, confuse both, of course. Yeah? I mean, I know a lot of Egyptians, and they are um, wonderful people, and they want change. And they said, we either voted for Mursi because we didn't want Shafiq back, the old system, mm -hmm. or some of them said, well, we are so afraid of the Islam, so we voted for Shafiq, but we didn't want him, really. And so they, they had no real choice. That's the problem. The third power is not really there, and the opposition is still not this third power, I fear. And if the opposition can be this third power, as Thomas Hazel called it, what would you say? There's a National Salvation Front, which has by now uh, rejected all call for a national dialogue put mm. forth by President Morsi. The National Salvation Front, the most prominent face is Mohamed mm. al-Baradai, mm. the former UN diplomat, mm. Amr Musa, former foreign minister, mm. uh, Hamdin Sabi, Sabahi. Mm. What would you say? Who among these are the most likely candidates to rally the country behind him? Uh, I, am, I am disappointed from the Muslim Brotherhood and I am very disappointed from this um, National Front because um, they have a coalition with some figures from the old system. And now if you really read, uh, need a revolutionary change, then you have to distance yourself too. And now we have some figures in uh, this, um, yeah. Um, so you call them the old guard? They are no, part of the old a guard? a part of them, a part of them. Mm -hmm. Because El Barade, and, and I think what, um, now because you said there's uh, three powers, it's very, I think we will make a mistake if we concentrate, it is, we have the government, and then we have the opposition, and then we have the young people. I think there is another power, we forget it, that's the poorest e Egyptian on the street, and they do now the most uh, demonstration. Now you have this violence, because these people, they lose a lot in the Mubarak site, and now they lose more, and now you have a lot of them, they are dying, uh, you know, 22%, a 22 person, uh, they are judges uh, to death. Uh, that means who pays all these things, uh, the economic disaster, and so it's um, all as uh, a um, poorest Egyptian. And these people now, they are who are now on the street, and they said we will carry our uh, own evolution. And, what and perhaps to shed light for our views, the 21 people uh, are supporters of a football club that are sentenced to death. Is, is and s some of them were not in this football too. Man took them. Uh, there is a right, lot of was, studies. This was yeah. a game between Port Said yes. Club Al Masri and the Cairo Club Al yes. Ali uh, a year ago, where 74 people uh, died, and the death sentences now handed out are I, I to like, supporters of Al Masri. I, I would like just to conclude what I said that now you have in Egypt a, a big crisis in the people who really carry this revolution. They don't trust the Muslim brother, but they don't trust the Baradei, but because they disappointed them because they cooperate with the old system, and now you have this own government uh, on the on the street and this power of the street now i see it challenged everybody and uh, we have to take it because that's really i am afraid that in the next time it was very it will be very bloody because it's not just uh, demonstration for uh, revolution, but for their um, yeah, food, too, and, and social justice. And Said Samir, indeed, the, the opposition is not very popular, because a lot of people are saying that if you had, re if you had come together in the first place back then, mm. when election time came around, we wouldn't have to deal now with Morsi. We wouldn't have to deal now with yes, the Muslim right. Brotherhood. Of course, actually, uh, some candidate like uh, Hamdin Sabahi, he is very open about this, and uh, he said, uh, I am really sorry about uh, doing this big mistake and not collaborating with Abul Futuh, for example. Uh, they would have no problem to win. And uh, the opposition is not, uh, as you said, so popular. No, they are popular. If you look at the uh, results of the first phase of the presidential campaign, uh, Muslim Brother who didn't uh, win the candidate, Morsi didn't win maybe like a uh, third of the uh, voters. Uh, I'd like also to uh, attract a very important question about how can a president be a member of an illegitimate 
political group. Until now, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt is not an illegitimate group. There are so many calls on them to try and come out and be transparent, say, come, register yourself, and tell us how you are financed, how many members you have, and play fair with other groups in the society. But even the president being a member of it is not encouraging this. And I don't believe that Morsi is the biggest power in the Muslim Brotherhood, and many people say, and not even the Morshid, he's just a religious figure for the group, but the most powerful person in the Muslim Brotherhood is the richest one. And the economic inside, uh, uh, the business deals uh, inside the uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood plays a very important part in ranking who has more political power. And that's why I believe Morsi is facing pressure not only from the opposition and not only from the old system, but also from inside the Muslim Brotherhood, they are forcing some decisions on him. And that's why I said earlier, some of his consultants had to resign because of this. So he's in a very bad situation. Uh, he, until now, he is trying his best. I don't really have, uh, normally I'm very optimistic, but I don't really have uh, so much hope if he goes the same way, he has to try to gain some credibility. He lost so many credibility. He could have uh, 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 respected the new constitution and uh, got a new uh, general attorney. Until now, the general attorney he assigned is still in power. There are so many other things, the maximum wages. So many people are calling on him, please do something. This is one of the major requests of the revolution, one of the demands, but he's still avoiding it. Mm. He has to change this, he has to prove himself, he has to gain some more credibility, or he will live in power with so much unrest until he is out of it. And indeed, Thomas Hazel, this regime, this, this government is losing legitimacy fast. People in Egypt are turning their backs on politics. What needs to be done now in order for, 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 Morsi, for Morsi to break free, as Saeed Samir was suggesting? I think it would be indeed very important to show now that he's the president of all Egyptians, to um, reach out to the opposition, which he um, does again and again. Do you think he can still sometime. win the trust? Um, I think it's never too late. I mean, he's, he's yeah. in power now for, for seven, eight months. That's not very long. And uh, I must admit, um, I think nobody would really like to be president of Egypt right now. The problems he, is, um, he has are so many. Mm -hmm. Economic problems, social problems, political problems. Um, he has to deal with so many uh, different institutions who are against him. He has to win the street. He has, as you said, um, the, uh, in his own group, the Muslim Brotherhood, he has very rich businessmen who are, um, who are very keen to uh, get better positions, to get better contracts in the future, to, uh, to maybe take the places of the old Mubarak elite. Yeah? And he has to deal with that too. Then he has uh, his followers in the Muslim Brotherhood who are the poorer, uh, uh, in the poorer uh, parts of the society, who want uh, some social uh, um, promises um, fulfilled, who want uh, a maximum wage, for example, a minimum wage, etc. Um, but the, the state has no money at the moment right now. Um, there was talk about changing the tax system, for example. To, to raise uh, the taxes um, for the rich people and, uh, and to change the whole, whole system of subsid uh, subsidies. Um, this is very important, but it's very difficult to do it until now it didn't happen because the, the obstacles are so big. I have to interrupt. I, I'd like to ask him a question. What do you th why do you think uh, Morsi doesn't come up with uh, maximum wages, new general attorney? There are no need for any resources to take such decisions. Why is not taking them? It's it's difficult. I think I think um, the, the attorney he, he he chose is still the same, right? And I think it's it's a lot about also um, showing that he's the president. If he makes a decision, uh, it's his decision, and he's sovereign in doing it. This, of course, sometimes um, politically not maybe the most rational thing to do. But a lot of times we have that. Losing face is a very important and difficult issue. New constitution gives him full face to come and say. I adhere to the constitution, I respect it, and let us do it as the people want it, not as a, someone I assigned from outside Egypt. He called him from the Gulf. 
to come and be the general attorney. The, I don't see any excuse for him to keep the general attorney or to set a, 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 a plan for maximum wages. There is, Egypt is a very poor country, and you said they need money, they need resources, the economy is doing bad. There is no excuse to come and say, guys, we have to have maximum wages here. It is not fair that some people get uh, uh, $100 per month, and some people get a few million per but, month. But you, mm. yeah, but you know that the Muslim brother, uh, and it's very important for us to think about it, Muslim brother, they are conservative in their values, but their political si um, system or their program, it's very new liberal, a new very liberal capitalist. one. Yeah. And uh, you have in the Constitution no guarantee for workers' rights and uh, for trade union and so uh, and uh, we have now from the Muslim Brotherhood that the new elite now in Egypt is a new economic elite they are from the Islamists they are very rich they are a lobby and uh, if you change a lot of uh, uh, taxes program then they will ag be against it yeah. and that's very important for us to, to know that yes. they are not just political elite they are very strong economic elite yeah, I mean I mean the, the first uh, candidate for presidency uh, of the Muslim Brotherhood Shatter, yeah. Shatter, yeah. he's a very rich man yeah he's he, uh, he, um, he's not a billionaire but he's a millionaire mm. multimillionaire and those people why should they choose yes. a maximum wage that's not good for them so and why should they why should they be just replacing the, the Mubarak regime. So we had a corrupted uh, capitalist regime who was playing only for the rich, suppressing the poor and the opposition, and we change it with a new regime that is authoritative as well, and his only beard, his only like waving some religious slogans, and even those religious uh, uh, slogans, they are not sincere about them. They were saying to the people, you have to say yes for the new constitution. This is the way to Sharia. And they know very well this will never be the case. It is unrealistic. And that's why just a few days ago, the biggest Islamist group, a Salafist in Noor, they started now being very critical against and they even joined the, the Salvation Front. Mm. And so uh, the unrest, the political unrest in Egypt is immense. They have to be really sincere. They have to work hard and to prove that they are not just m providing uh, empty words. But, but if I, I may say something about this, um, it was quite clear that the Muslim Brotherhood will not be a democratic force when, once it comes to power. It might be some part of a change. But they yeah? claim so. it can, well, Yesterday he a lot of, so a lot of well. people. Well, yeah. The word democracy and, and I'm for democracy is a very important token if you talk internationally, of course. Yeah, if you talk to a Western um, chancellor or president, you mm -hmm. say I'm for democracy, of course. But, um, but still, um, the democratic force are those people who have to win from more transparency, from participation. That means a lot of people, well, most Egyptians would win, I think. Yeah? And um, those are the democratic forces, uh, a lively opposition that really has some kind of constructive ideas as well, who, who wants to find consensuses and not just opposing, because this is not really working. And it's absolutely clear there must be checks and balances, uh, also for the Muslim Brotherhood, and there must be free elections, transparent elections. And I'm quite sure then in some years, maybe the Muslim Brotherhood will, will play still a role, or the party of the Muslim Brotherhood, but it will not be the majority, maybe. It depends on, on how it's going, uh, how the future will, will look like, how politically uh, it's changing and, and economically it's changing. The biggest financial supporter of Egypt, uh, the United States, has remained uh, remarkably silent uh, so far on this uh, subject matter. What would you all say? Would it even be wise for an outside force now to step in and try to influence events within mm. within Egypt? Anyone? I think uh, the American government did and does uh, influence um, Egyptian politics. Apparently, um, there was really a strong current inside the Egyptian army who wanted Shafiq to win, and they would have let him win, but apparently the Americans um, Talk to them and told them that would be the worst thing to do. And so Morsi was the, the better bet for them. And I think they, they're still uh, somehow influencing uh, him as well. And of Egypt, course. of course, is a pivotal country in the African world, in the Middle East. But yet, is this first and foremost an Egyptian affair? 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking now about the, the <laughs> USA again. Do you know what? We have now in Egypt, it's a, you know, we'll concentrate now on cooperation with Germany and, uh, and USA and how, what they are doing in Egypt. But now I notice we, we focus again on this governmental relationship, international relationship, but what we have now in Egypt too, this power, what I said, uh, uh, this in the street power, and they are very anti-Western. And uh, now, uh, if Germany helped a lot, Germany has, uh, or USA too, if they helped, but now in the same time, when you go on the demonstration and you have in your hand this uh, gas, uh, mm. This uh, mm. tear gas, yes. yeah. it's made in USA. People read well, that. In Germany. And, and, and uh, or the pistols or so. Mm. Do you know? I think it's very important that here in the West we don't focus on, okay, we would like to help Egyptians in the transformation, in the democratization, but we have to transform ourselves here in Germany and in USA what kind of support to, uh, they will give. Is this weapon sub support or is this really um, to, to, to help the Egyptian in the education system and the water system and so on? Actually, so the West it. is very pragmatic and uh, they don't give free money. The Muslim Brotherhood, they know this very well, and the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, represented by Morsi, uh, they are not only following the, the footsteps of Mubarak uh, in, in the inside issues, but also in the international relations. And the, it's very interesting mm. that they are using the Salafists now as Mubarak used to use <laughs> Ikhwan. Yes. So they are threatening the West. If Morsi or the Muslim Brotherhood will get out of the picture, it will be an Islamic revolution. And it was said very bluntly in the public, and the, this threat is the same uh, scenario that was Mubarak using when the West would try to put some pressure on him, say, you have to let some democracy process go, and say, if we have democracy in Egypt, Muslim Brotherhood will come, and you'll have a lot of problems with them. And they are doing the same now. Well, <laughs> clearly, clearly, we still have a long way to go in Egypt, and clearly we will talk much more about Egypt in the coming days and weeks. I want to thank my guests for a very spirited discussion. I want to thank you out there for tuning in, and looking forward to seeing you again next week for a new edition of Quadriga.